Good morning. Welcome to Unity in Harlem Sunday Services today, June 19, 2022. Today is Father's Day, and we send out warm blessings to all fathers. We are always pleased to welcome our Unity in Harlem speaker and teacher, Reverend Carol J. Hunt. The order of service is as follows. Murray Ponzi will perform the opening celebration song, Your Spirit by Tasha Carl. And the Wilson will read the announcement. Bob Ponzi will read the Unity in Harlem affirmation. And Jackson will read the daily word. Murray Ponzi's first song will prepare us for meditation, performing the song, Unbecoming. Reverend Carol G. Hunt will guide us through meditation, after which, today's talk, Truth to the Power, Truth, My Shield and Buckler, in honor of Father's Day. After today's talk, prayer request, signs, and offering, a musical selection by Ricky Byers, Oyahia, prayer for protection, and in closing, the peace song. And now, the celebration song. Marie? Thank you so much, Heather. Uh, let's bring our great history to the fore in the best way possible, including everyone. A full life for everyone, everyone. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. Oh God, divine. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. the fire we are the temple you are the voice we are your song you are our god we are your people you are the light we stand in all we stand in all you We stand in all you. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God, send your spirit, God. Not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God, send your spirit, God. You called us out, out of the darkness, into your love, into your light. Grace upon grace, beauty for ashes, you come to us, we come alive. We stand in awe of you. Your 
spirit, God. Send your spirit, God. Acceptance for all of us. And now for our announcement. Unity in Harlem Zoom Connection. You dial in 698-428-2625 at phone 929-205-6099 using pass code 777777. Immediately after Sunday service, we fellowship. We ask that you join us. Tuesday study group, 6 to 8 p.m. We continue to study the book Divine Audacity by Linda Martello with Seth. On Fridays, Unity in Harlem for a circle. Join us from 6 to 7 p.m. Spiritual fitness meditation and TNT, which is Tip every day for the month of June. Dial in 717-908-1837 using passcode 360392. Unity in Harlem Gospel Gram for June 2022 is featured on our Unity in Harlem Facebook page. Anyone want to minister about a personal matter? Feel free to call 646-481-1844. We have a Saturday special, guys. June 25th at 3 p.m., Unity in Harlem Volunteer. Recognition Day via Zoom at 3 p.m. We have a guest speaker, Felicia Collins, Ph.D. in Social Work Policy and Executive Director of Pillars. Next Sunday, June 26th, Truth to Power, we continue our talk, Spirit of Truth, of Truth, Blessing. This goes out. Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Unity affirmations speak to the power of our words and particularly the power of I am. 
And so we say this affirmation every Sunday to affirm our divine nature. The words are on the screen and I invite you to say them with me. I am an abundant radiating center of God's love and light for peace, healing and inner truth for all. Hello, this is Ann Jackson with the Daily Word for today, June 19th, 2022, which is Father's Blessing. I bless all fathers with thoughts of gratitude. I am grateful for fathers, great-grandfathers, fathers, and all father figures who care for children and families. I pray they are called always to follow their guidance and to act to express divine love. I envision their hearts and minds opening to receive blessings of strength, patience, and tenderness. I see them supported in all they're called upon to do and comforted during times of struggle. I pray also for children, young and old, as they remember their fathers. May cherished memories bring smiles and warmth, and may the love remain alive forever in hearts and minds. And for all those on a healing or forgiveness journey, I pray that divine love leads and comforts them on a path towards lasting peace. May the peace and love of God fill their hearts today and every day. The Lord bless you and keep you. Numbers chapter 6 verse 24. Thank you. This goes out to everyone who has ever been questioned or questioned their ability to be just the way they are. Thank you, Daniel Nama, for writing the song for me, for us. made of or is this really me I've only recently discovered only stood in the shadows of expectations of me now I see there's no judge there's no jury and now I know I can take my own road. I feel the freedom I have never known. It's about unbecoming what I never was. It's about unlearning what was never true. It's about unbelieving all the lies that I've been told. Unbecoming is a story of my soul. Everybody's name is given. Nobody asks us who we really are. But after oh so many years of living, you wouldn't think that the answer would be so very far. I'm slow, I'm smart, I'm accounting, I'm art, I'm left brain or right. I'm a morning person for night well. Maybe it's time to step outside those lines and see who I really find. See who I really find. 
about unbecoming when I never was. It's about unlearning what was never true. It's about unbelieving all the lies that I've been told. Unbecoming is a story of my soul. The scariest thing is offending or disappointing everyone's vision of how I should be. But the only way home is to fly on my own till I know, till I see. It's about unbecoming what I never was. It's about unlearning what was never true. It's about unbelieving all the lies that I've been told. Unbecoming is coming home. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel Namwad. And thank you, Reverend Carol Hunt. Can't wait to hear what you got to say today. Good morning. Good morning to each of you. And thank you for joining us today. A beautiful day to celebrate fathers. A beautiful day to celebrate the father in you. A beautiful day to truly understand what it means to be father. To truly be father. In your family, in your community, and most of all, to yourself to invite the Father within you to be all it can be in expression. On this beautiful day, Juneteenth, this annual celebration from here on in, We can reflect on the many physical fathers who walked, who marched, who did all they could do for us to reach where we are now, not only as African Americans, but as all of humanity in recognizing and acknowledging our oneness with the Creator. This celebration day belongs to everyone, for it's about freedom. Freedom. We remember them. They did not get to see this day, but we somehow know they felt this day would come. And as we move now into our meditation time, keep those fathers, grandfathers, elders, 
the ancient ones. In mind, as we go about this day in celebration. We remove any distractions that might be around us. And we let the space around us be clear, free of everything that as we pray the energy of spirit into the place, into the place where you are, and it joins with the energy of the space that is created by all of us right now. Remove it all that we collectively breathe in the spirit and release any congestion And we breathe in deeply again. Releasing congestion. Congestion in mind. Congestion in body. And any constriction we may feel in the spirit. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Continue this easy breathing. Connect deeply with your breath. Feel that energy. Listen to your own rhythm as you inhale and exhale. Let every inhale, exhale, relax you more and more. You release and let go. Release and let go. And call yourself to be here now. To be in this moment, in this place. And now take a deep breath. Hold the breath. One one thousand. Two one thousand. Three one thousand. Four one thousand. Five one thousand. Six one thousand, seven one thousand. Exhale slowly. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand. Six one thousand, seven one thousand, eight one thousand, nine one thousand. 
Feel the quiet. Feel the quiet descend from within. Release it to without. Again, a deep breath. Breathe in deeply. Fill your lungs. Hold the breath. For seven, exhale the breath slowly for nine on your own. You are quiet, you are still. Let your thoughts, your quiet, Thank you to the Father of them. And let Father, your highest self, your spiritual identity, in this quiet let yourself envision all those who have traveled the road listening to their higher self listening and hearing the word, follow me. Follow me. Listening to the Father. Hearing, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Hear the voice express that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, Let it be acceptable. Father. Let the Father speak and I hear.
I am the one I am looking for. I am one who leads and guides. I am makes no mistake. I am faith made manifest this day and every day. The Father speaks and says, listen, listen, listen. My heart sing, I will never forget you. I will never forget you. In all things, you are more than come through him that loves you. more than conquer. Listen to the Father. The Father in you expressing and that they may know we are one. I am one. They are one. We are all one. Hold this truth in your heart now. Speak this truth Now take a deep breath. And exhale the breath. Take another deep breath. Exhale. Feel relaxed. Restored, ready ready to be all you can be.
in the consciousness of the Christ mind, this prayer is offered. Amen. Good afternoon again, and so happy to be here today. I've been away for a whole week, and it's wonderful to come back and share this time our topic, as well as some experiences that I had when we meet together after the service. We continue today with our theme of truth to power for the month of June. And today, truly by accident, the sub-theme is truth as shield and buckler. I don't believe I knew it was Father's Day. when these words came to me. But how appropriate, wouldn't you say so? The words are so uh, male, manic, manish. That it couldn't be more perfect. So this theme is, is uh, really to continue to know truth and be ready to speak to the truth, but also understanding that there's relative power and there's absolute power. We get a sense of absolute power when we are in quiet time. In meditation, we also get a chance to see absolute power in the lives of people who, who speak to absolute power. But from a human point of view, we... Oh, Carol, adjust your camera. I'm 
not sure I was able to do that. Bear with me, folks. Well, you'll be able to see me whether or not I can read from the side. That's another question. All right. So it's going to be truth to power today. And I certainly hope you feel, feel it. Understanding that there is relative power and absolute power, we need to be more purposeful when speaking truth to power. We uh, tend to say, well, they should be doing this, or I should be doing this, or they should be doing the other, when really what we are talking about is relative power relative because it changes from one person to another. But we understand now that absolute power when it's spoken is the same over and over and over again, it does not change. Truth of power is on display all around us, everywhere you look, a person, a group, or government entity is attempting to speak truth to power. Current congressional hearings is a great example. But it is relative power, isn't it? Is it not? Another example of what may appear to be truth to power is the relationship of parent to child. It is no more than relative truth to varying degrees of relative power. So it is with all persons who have authority. In the world of theology and dogma, the idea of speaking truth to power is taken for granted. And then with clergy, if clergy isn't able to speak truth to power, who can? The words shield and buckler are from ancient times. I'm sure when you think about the two words, movies of ancient Rome and other countries and societies come to mind regular, rightly. And, and it, when we saw these movies, men were covered from head to toe with armor to protect themselves from the enemy. The shields were large enough to hide behind so that they didn't get killed from arrows and spears. And the buckler itself was a small shield to fit on the wrist or the forearm in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The image is 100% male, 
and perfect for this day, as I was saying before. From a human universe or human consciousness perspective, this is the image of the strong man being perpetuated from a physical point of view. Even today, it is right in our midst, stylized and different, but nonetheless here. Police officers protect themselves from attack by wearing chest bulletproof armor. Vulnerable parts of the body for sports are now subject to outer protective gear, irrespective of gender. And even children have been brought into it for wearing uh, uh, helmets when they ride a bike. All about protective gear, all about not being hurt. Marvel characters have all sorts of protective gear for the body, perpetuating the idea that the physical is where man's mankind's truth and strength really lie. Think about it. If we can protect the body, all bodies, fictionally or otherwise, this is where truth really is. Scriptures say otherwise, wouldn't you believe it? In Ephesians 6, 11, which I will read, I want you to listen with your inner ear. Even close your eyes if necessary. As we look at what Paul is really talking about. Okay, give me a minute here. I had it and then I promptly lost it. Okay. <clears throat> so Ephesians starting at the 11th verse. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then. In other words, continue. Stand firm again with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and your feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can ex extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God.
I'm going to read it once more. And this time, it's not Reverend Carol speaking. It's Reverend Paul of Tarsus sharing his interpretation, his own speaking truth to power. Put on the whole full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil and heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day comes, the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand again, firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Take it and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. They said that Paul was quite an orator. I'm sure I did not do justice. And he did what most clergy do, and certainly in unity we do it. We take examples from our own living experience of the day, our times, and interpret them so that they can speak to the lives of the people who are listening. And so it is for us in unity. No one is walking around with a breastplate and buckler, yet the language of that time, the people was probably riveted to what he had to say and how he used the images to make his point. So if you were listening, the word, excuse me, the word devil, which of course we do not use in unity, people use the word, but when you use the word uh, devil, it conjures up an image. As sometimes the word God does, conjures up an image whatever that could be. And so since the image of the devil is the exact opposite of what the word uh, God image would bring up, we say that the devil represents ignorance. Error thought, thoughts that are opposite of the good. So right away, he's planting the idea that the struggle is not against the physical or even one another, flesh and blood. But it's not against the physical. It's about the rulers and the authority who have relative power. That's who his audience, he want, who I would want us to concentrate on. The dark world, their world filled 
with ignorance. Spiritual forces of evil, those who represent themselves as spiritual, but are truly ignorant. They are, they have error thoughts. This is the language of Fillmore's time, error thoughts. We simply say ignorant. He says, be able to stand in your full armor. Be able to stand fully clothed. Those men, head to toe, were covered. And they wore those shields on their knees. So your knees won't buckle under the strain. When you stand, be able to stand fully clothed. Have on yourself, not the breastplate or the belt, but the belt across your stomach. And isn't that so like what we experience when things are unsettling for us, we feel it in the pit of our stomach. And we need to what? Take a couple of breaths. Maybe not deal with it at all. Get out of the way. Don't say what we know we're supposed to say. Have truth. Be the truth. Have truth centered in yourself. And then your stomach is strong able to withstand relative power. The breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness. For us, the word righteousness always stands for right thinking. So across the breast, the heart, right thinking from the heart. And you can use all the words, love, compassion, harmony, that would emanate from the heart, all representing truth for power, love. Let your feet be strong. Let them be able to hold you up. This is no time for looking for a chair to sit on. If someone offers you a seat, don't take it. When we think we cannot stand, we can. Even if you have to, if you can't think of a scripture or a verse, just say to yourself, feet, don't fail me now. When you think you can't stand, you can. I can remember an experience of my own like that. It happened during the service for my husband. And Eric Butterworth did, uh, I didn't have it, well, uh, I did it in reverse. My husband was um, buried first and then the service later that evening. And so Eric Butterworth came out with my family and friends to the cemetery. And that morning in preparation, prayer, daily word, Bible, you name it, I had it within me. I had read a scripture about standing, standing firm. And the scripture, while well, I can't find it for you today, had something about an elephant. Now, when an elephant stands, that is solid, is it not? I carried that thought with me to the burial ground. And when Eric was doing the service, when I 
felt a twinge that maybe I would not be able to stand. The words came back and I stood. It takes work, it takes a commitment and an intent to stand. Whether it's a situation like that, or you're with a group of people who are saying something that is totally relative power and not near absolute power, not speaking truth to power, Let something come to mind that allows you to stand. Carry the shield of faith, no matter the number of lies, lies, false information, number of names and limitations that might be suggested about you. When, they, when, when you have that faith, they cannot penetrate because your belief in the substance of things hoped for and what cannot be seen. So very often what we see, what we see on a daily basis is relative. But knowing the truth sustains you. You're sustained through your faith. The helmet of salvation. Well, now. So we go to the head. It's not what's on your head. It's what's in your head, in your mind. Not what's covering it. You could lose your hat, your cap, or any covering. What's inside can never be destroyed. That you carry with you everywhere. And I, we can think of images of our heroes, our father heroes. grandfathers, uncles, sons, nephews. What's inside of their head, in their mind, their thoughts can never, be, was never destroyed, can never be destroyed, for many will come behind them. We salute them, bless them, because they held to the speaking truth to power. And the sword of the spirit, Paul declares that the sword of the spirit is the word. The words you actually speak Spirit words, that is speaking truth to power. Even though the language of Reverend Paul is male, masculine in nature and reflects the lack of equality of women when read and heard in spiritual terms, it transcends the physical and human limitations of humanity. No one is left out of speaking truth to power. Speaking truth to power is gender-free, race-free, ethnicity-free. So the idea of some issues are spoken better by men and others by women is still thinking relatively. 
It's fine for as far as it goes, but this is about absolute power. As we go about continuing to think about speaking truth to power, examine what is your truth and how you speak it from what's in your mind and how does it compare with relative power because when you put them side by side the relative power we understand from our heart that this is where the consciousness of everyone is in in this particular situation and not hold it against them or say they should be doing more. They are doing as much as they know how in the situation they are in or choose to be in. And as we reflect on the speaking truth to power, the absolute power, we turn it back on ourselves and say, am I living up to this idea of speaking truth to power? Let us all commit ourselves to walking in this space every day and being all that we can be. And as we continue to salute the fathers, grandfathers, sons, nephews, uncles, before, now, and those to come. Bless you, my friends. We prepare ourselves now for our own prayer requests or even the request of others. And move into our time and offerings. So we close eyes. We center ourselves in this idea of speaking truth to power. This power that is within us, seeking expression in the world that we live in. 
There's no place to go to get it. We are the power of the spoken word. Through the I am identity that we are. Created to speak truth to power. For how else will they know? unless we who do know share it. Think about that. How else will they know? Whatever the request, see it in the center of this energy. Bless it with your own idea. Speak the truth to it or them, him or her. We are all divine in nature and that divinity awaits our call. We give thanks for this understanding. We give thanks for this truth. We bless it and say Amen. And now hold your gift. See your gift. Give thanks for the gift that you wish to share. For as you give, so you receive. We give thanks for all those who share their gifts with unity in Harlem. We bless you and see you growing and receiving more from within you to share with others. There is a prayer we say together every Sunday. And it's on the screen. I will read it and then we will say it together. Divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I give and all that I receive. Shall we know it together? Divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I give and all that I receive. So be it. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, hey, yeah. Oh, yeah, hey, yeah. Oh, yeah, hey, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, hey, yeah. Hallelujah. I am lifting in the love of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Oh, what a song God inspired. I would praise the Spirit all day long. Praise the Spirit all day long. Oh, yeah, hey, uh, oh, yeah, hey, uh, oh, yeah, hey, uh, hallelujah, oh, yeah, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, oh, yeah, hey, uh, hallelujah, oh, yeah, hey, uh, hallelujah. I am moving in the rhythm of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Oh, what a song God inspired keeps me dancing. My faith is strong, keeps me dancing. My faith is strong. Oh, yeah, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, oh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hallelujah. There's a silence, holy, holy silence, hallelujah, everywhere, everywhere. Thanks, Ricky Byers, for that song. <laughs> and yeah. thank you, Carol. Whoa. Ephesians 6. We wrestle not against flesh and bones. Hello. What? What a timely message. For so many reasons. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Done. Yeah, truth. To the core. <laughs> to the bone. <laughs> True to the bone. <laughs> Past flesh. Uh, <laughs> wow. Shall we now say the prayer of protection and thank you to everyone uh, for participating today to Heather and Anne and of course Maria and Bob. Oh, thanks. Uh, all right. Prayer of protection. The light. I of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. The peace song and join us after <laughs> let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on 
was meant to be with God as creator. Minutes. All right.